Greetings and salutations, everyone. In this video, we're going to go over the rest of the Psycho films. Psycho 2 takes place two decades after the original murders at the Bates Motel. Anthony Perkins reprises his role as Norman Bates and completes his treatment at a mental hospital institution. And he befriends a girl named Mary Loomis, played by Meg Tilly, and gets a job at waiting tables at a diner. Norman begins to hear voices once again. No matter how hard he tries, Norman cannot keep mother, the mother personality um, from returning and tries to get him to start killing again. It's of course revealed that Lila, who married Sam Loomis and Mary, tried to drive Norman Bates in going insane again because she isn't happy that he got out of the mental institution for murdering people. The daughter begins to think that Norman really is changed and she thinks it's unfair that her mother is trying to get him to go back to being insane just so he could be still be locked up. So basically in this film she's torturing Norman to try to drive him back to being insane and kind of to kill again, which is a weird motive to have if you don't want him to kill. Why would you kill him, get him try to get him to kill people again just so he could be locked up? And Anyways, the doctor catches on to, well, Norman Bates' doctor catches on to this, and at the ending, um, it's, Lila is, gets killed by someone, <laughs> and Mary, she dresses up as Norman Bates' mother because Norman gets a call, and it's the doctor, but Norman thinks it's mother. And they have end up having this conversation, sorta. And Mary answers, takes the phone away from Norman and talks into it. And the doctor realizes that she's there and ends up going up to the house. Right when he finds her dressed up as the mother, well, yeah, mother. <laughs> he then tries to grab a hold of her and while saying "gotcha." And she st ends up stabbing him in the chest, thinking it's Norman, because during the whole time, Norman was still talking on the phone, and then hangs up right when she picks up to try to make him think that it's her. She ends up stabbing the doctor. He ends up falling off the steps and pushes the knife in it even further, killing him. Norman sees this and is in shock for a bit, but tells her that he will help her cover it up, take care of her and everything. And they end up going down to the fruit cellar because she backs into it for some reason. And um, she keeps stabbing him and cutting him during this whole time while he's just trying to get her into the fruit cellar, I guess. He then stumbles on Cole, revealing that Lila is dead, that her dead body was under there. And Mary thinks that he killed her. And she was about to kill him after he falls to the ground from stumbling on the coal. The cops come in just at the right time and shoot uh, Mary. And then they go to the police station, kind of like in the first film. And Norman is let go. And it's revealed that the old lady who also worked at the diner is supposed to be Norman's real mother. And Norman kills her. And basically does what he did to his mom in the first film so it's kind of in a way i guess somewhat connected to the first film like a copy of the first film towards the ending i would say but i still actually prefer, like the sequel a lot for all the things that they did i do think there's a it, certain type of issues to it like the whole like lila's motive for wanting to drive norman to being to go back insane and put into the institution Kind of think it's weird to try to drive him insane just so he would kill and get locked up again. I would think that would be the thing you would want to stop and make sure it never happens again. But anyways, I still like this film. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's good. I do recommend it. You guys can leave a comment below tell me you guys' thoughts about it. Now, Psycho 3 also picks up after Psycho 2. Anthony Perkins reprises his role as Norman. And Norman attempts to put his life back together still after Psycho 2 and tries to basically stay sane, but the mother voice in his head still, again, basically like in Psycho 2, he is still being going further into madness, and it's hard for him to keep control of that. He comes in 
contact with uh, Maureen, who reminds him of Marion. She ends up staying at the motel, and she attempts to kill herself, but Norman helped her. After all that, they begin to have a relationship, and he's trying to control who he is. And he doesn't really kill her at the end, but it's more of an accident because the mother voice in his head gets to him, and he accidentally knocks her down, I think, knocks her down the steps, and she ends up breaking her neck or something, and she dies. Anyways, there's also this nosy uh, reporter <laughs> that's, I guess she's, there's this reporter, and in the movie... She tries to look into Norman Bates and finds out who the old lady is from the last film. It does end up finding out that he that she is not really Norman Bates' mother, of course. <laughs> and then Norman goes up to the room and stabs the corpse and basically gets rid of the mother personality. Even at the ending when he's back in the police car, he says that he is free. So I guess he's either wanting to get out of the house and everything because of his past, which is understandable. They even delve into that in the first film, well, not in the first film, second film, that he does remember the past of killing his mother. So, Psycho 3, I wouldn't say it's the worst or the best. I would say it's just okay for a sequel. It, it definitely does have a lot more of the 80s slasher vibe to it, which I guess works for it. So, yeah, I don't really hate it. It's more of just like, uh, meh to me. <laughs> um, I do like that they brought in more things from the first Psycho film, like the candy corn thing that I mentioned in the my Psycho review that Norman has as a nor nervous tick, but I don't think they use it as much as a nervous tick in this film. Anyways, off to Psycho 4. <laughs> After being released from a mental institution, either again or I think this is supposed to be the sequ the true sequel to the first film. Um, I say this because they don't mention any of the other sequels. Anyways, Norman Bates calls in to tell his life story to a radio host played by CCH Pounder. Norman recalls his days as his childhood and basically just talks about his schizophrenic mother, played by Olivia Hussey, and the jealous rage that inspired him to murder her in his past. Well, in the present, Norman lives with his pregnant wife, who isn't revealed until the ending when he says he's going to have to kill again, Connie, featuring Connie fearing that his child will inherit his split personality disorder, I guess, or his homicidal tendencies. <laughs> now, I also loved Psycho 4 as, well, I thought it was a great sequel slash prequel to the first film. So, yeah, I actually loved Psycho 4 more than Psycho 3. So, yeah, even a little bit more than Psycho 2. I'd actually say a lot more than Psycho 2, actually. So, Psycho 4, I would say, is definitely one of the sequels I constantly go back to. And same with Psycho 2. Psycho 3 just kind of goes back and forth for me. Like, I, I'll watch it, but then I'll just be like, eh, not really in the mood for it. Psycho 2 and 4, I'm usually always in the mood to watch for with 2. Same with the first film, of course. But depending on the sequels, those are the two I go to the most. What do you guys think of these sequels to the Psycho franchise? Do you love them, hate them, like them, or meh? <laughs> um, leave a comment below. Tell me your guys' thoughts on the sequels. Um, which were your favorites? Which would, did you hate the most, I would say? Um, leave a comment below. Tell me your guys' thoughts. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the remake of Psycho.